Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. Have you ever wondered about the whereabouts of the descendants stemming from Abraham? I'm referring to the children Abraham had with his second wife, as mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter 25. What became of the descendants of Abraham and Keturah? While Isaac, the child of promise, and Ishmael are often discussed, it's intriguing to ponder the fate of the six children Abraham had with Keturah. In this video, in response to numerous requests from our channel subscribers, we will together delve into the question of Abraham and Keturah, where are their descendants now? The sacred scriptures recount that shortly after the loss of his wife Sarah, Abraham decided to marry again. According to the information found in the Book of Chronicles, his second wife initially began as a concubine, and later Abraham formalized the marriage, thus having six children with her. This woman's name was Keturah. I'm planning to create a more detailed video about this figure from the Old Testament, an intriguing female character. If you're interested in a comprehensive video about Keturah, please leave your comment. Keturah is often confused with another figure from the Old Testament, Hagar, who was an Egyptian woman. However, it's important to note that Keturah is not described as an Egyptian woman, she is not linked to the land of Egypt. Richard Elliot Friedman, a respected biblical scholar, rejects the idea that Keturah is the same person as Hagar. He argues that this identification stems from an ancient rabbinic notion without basis in the Hebrew text. Furthermore, Friedman notes that this idea was rejected by renowned commentators of antiquity, such as Ibn Ezra, Ramban, and Rasban. The Book of Jubilees, a notably intriguing work that would certainly deserve a documentary or a special video, also supports the conclusion that Keturah and Hagar were distinct individuals, they were not the same person. It's important to remember that the Book of Jubilees is of great curiosity, dating back to approximately 700 BC, a remarkable antiquity. In this book, it's affirmed that Keturah and Hagar were not identical, in fact, the book even states that Abraham waited until after Hagar's death to marry again. I now invite you to join me in reading chapter 25 of the book of Genesis. Abraham married another woman, named Keturah. She bore him the following children, Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan fathered Sheba and Dedan, the descendants of Dedan were the Ashurim, Latushim, and Lumim. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephor, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All these were descendants of Keturah. Abraham gave everything he had to Isaac. But to the sons of his concubines, Abraham gave gifts, and while he was still alive, he sent them away from Isaac, to the land of the east. Abraham lived for a hundred and seventy-five years. He died in a good old age, in a ripe old age, and was gathered to his ancestors. As we examine the text, it becomes evident that Abraham had an additional six children after Isaac, named Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. These six children are the result of Abraham's union with Keturah. However, a question arises, what became of the descendants stemming from the union between Abraham and Keturah? Where exactly are these descendants, and in which countries are they currently located? It can be stated that one of the most notable tribes from the descendants of Abraham and Keturah was undoubtedly the Midianites. The Midianites were an ancient people who primarily inhabited the northwestern regions of the Arabian Peninsula, including parts of what is now Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, and the Sinai. They are mentioned in various ancient sources, including the Bible, Assyrian texts, and Egyptian records. Often, the Midianites are closely associated with other groups descended from Abraham. Hence, in certain parts of the scriptures, the terms Midianites, Medanites, and Ishmaelites are used interchangeably, see Genesis 37 verses 28 to 36, Judges 8 verse 24. It's quite likely that these three groups intermingled through marriages, indicating that the descendants of Abraham's children and concubines united through matrimony. 
Alongside other sister tribes, the Midianites were also descendants of Keturah, and these tribes primarily inhabited the region of Saudi Arabia. Specifically, the descendants of Abraham and Keturah are present today in Saudi Arabia and also Bahrain. The latter country hosts a considerable number of descendants of Abraham and Keturah. The tribes stemming from the six children of Abraham and Keturah are dispersed across various parts of Saudi Arabia, as well as Bahrain. Notably, it appears that one tribe from Keturah's lineage occupied an area of Saudi Arabia near the borders with Jordan, including the ancient region of Edom. This observation is corroborated by the fact that the Book of Job mentions one of Job's friends as a Shuhite. The reference to the Shuhites in the Book of Job can be found in chapter 2, verse 11, where it's mentioned that one of Job's friends was named Zophar the Niamathite. Zophar is among the friends who came to comfort Job during his difficult times, and the Shuhites are descendants of Shua, one of Abraham's children with Keturah. The current population of Saudi Arabia is largely composed of direct descendants of Abraham and Keturah. The six tribes descending from Keturah hold a significant presence in Saudi Arabia, forming the population's foundation. The Saudi Arabian inhabitants, including the renowned Midianites, are all connected to Abraham's lineage. Besides these six Arab tribes constituting Saudi Arabia's population, the influence of the Ishmaelites is also noteworthy due to interlinked marriages. In ancient times, as well as in the present day, Arabs continue to come together through marriage, promoting cultural amalgamation. Beyond Abraham's descendants, it's noteworthy that Saudi Arabia houses a Kushite presence. Certain descendants of Kush, a group historically established in Ethiopia, Somalia, and other African nations, have also found a home in the region encompassing Yemen and Oman. This is partly due to Yemen's ancient region having been a kingdom known as Sheba, comprising both Ethiopians from Ethiopia and Semitic Sabaeans. The kingdom of Sheba, also known as Saba, was an ancient realm existing in the region now encompassing Yemen and parts of Ethiopia in northeastern Africa. The history and wealth of the Kingdom of Sheba are often linked to biblical legends and stories, including the renowned visit of the Queen of Sheba to King Solomon, as described in the Old Testament. Some members of this population migrated to the Saudi Arabian region, enhancing the ethnic and historical diversity of this territory. An intriguing observation deserving attention is the story of the wife of a prominent character from the Old Testament, Jethro. Exploring Jethro's origins and the curiosities of his life would be an exceedingly valuable topic for a special video. Jethro's story is closely tied to Moses' narrative and the liberation of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Jethro was a priest of Midian and a tribal leader. He had several daughters, one of whom Moses met when he fled Egypt after killing an Egyptian who was mistreating an Israelite. Moses assisted Jethro's daughters in tending to their flock, and in gratitude, Jethro invited Moses to his home and offered him shelter. Over time, Jethro developed respect and appreciation for Moses, recognizing him as a man of God destined to lead the Israelites in their journey of liberation. If you'd like a video solely about him, please let me know in the comments. Being Moses' mentor and essentially his teacher, Jethro conveyed profound knowledge about Semitic culture and God's will to Moses, as he himself was a priest of God. Surprisingly, Jethro's wife was a Kushite woman. I extend my gratitude to all who have followed this video up to this point. I'd like to express my appreciation for your dedication thus far. Furthermore, I'm pleased to share the news that I'll soon be launching a highly intriguing and much-anticipated series for all of you, delving into the matriarchs of humanity. I am eager to present this series and have confidence that it will capture your interest, or at the very least, your curiosity. I invite you to watch the video currently being displayed on the screen, I'm certain you will enjoy it. See you soon.